Would I have a problem? If I was following those with my neighbor, if I was preaching those to my neighbor, if I was working to, to educate my neighbor as to the fact that we have to use our own system, we can't use that old system, would this be a problem? Would low prices be a problem? Would the lack of transportation be a problem? Would the mortgage be a problem? Wouldn't it be nice to pay some income tax again? <laughs> My friends, we've got to discipline ourselves. We're the best educated people in the world. Best educated people in the world. But the poorest trained. I don't think half of us are potty trained yet. You see, you resist training. And in order to operate a system, you have to train yourself for that. In order to cope with all of the complications and the variations of agriculture and the switching of commodities and the pursuit of maybe a penny or two more, takes a highly educated and skilled person. And you sitting here have survived in this environment. So you're exceptional people. You have taken the challenge that the system puts out to you, and they tell you, if you will use this gimmick and that gimmick and another gimmick, you can survive using our old system. And you people have proved it. You have. But boy, you're staggering. And you can look around and see a lot of empty seats here that used to be occupied by your neighbors. Now, take you back a minute. If efficiency worked, wouldn't you all be multimillionaires? Why aren't you? It don't work for you. It works for him. It gives him more supply to deal with, and he keeps a margin on every, uh, every bushel of it or every ton of it, so it makes that much more money. Why do you think he exported that extra three over th almost three and a half billion bushels of grain for you? For profit. Pro a lot of it you should have had. So that's why he has to do it. Don't blame him. You know, I told you, he's a pretty good boy as far as we're concerned. We make him do some things that he'd rather not do because every time we go in to talk to the majors, and I got a man sitting here to lie for me just to prove it. <laughs> every time we go seriously into these majors, they ask us, hey, when are you guys going to get your act together? You've got the system that can stabilize this great industry. They don't call it a great industry, but this little puddler we're swimming around in. But you guys, the way you handle it, you're. You're almost as unstable as that Board of Trade. They get to trading shirts down there once in a while, and we don't know what it's going to cost us to get that grain back out. See, that isn't the best situation either. Become contractible. You tell us about it. Tell us about the greatness of your system and how much you're going to do and when are you going to do it. When are you going to do it? We'll buy it. We don't care how much we have to pay for it. As long as somebody else can't buy it cheaper, for a certain amount of it. I hear people say, I'm going to spread out here a little bit, got some time. I hear people say that uh, we got to organize everybody. You see, if you organized everybody in any factor of the economy, you wouldn't have democracy anymore, would you? You'd have a form of socialism. There's got to be an area of, cr of profit it's got to be an area of competition in a capitalistic system. And that's what unorganized labor furnishes that for the great manufacturers. But Henry Ford, General Motors, wouldn't go into a two-year contract without a contract of labor today, I'll tell you that. But then they go out to subcontractors into the country 
where you fellows are used to working for nothing and they get the subcontractors to work cheap. And that's the area of competition. And the area of competition is protected by the minimum wage. All right. Doesn't it make sense to you? Now, what we have to do is organize our act and forget about the other guy. I'm sure he'll take care of himself just as soon as he gets to the poor farm. <laughs> now, that's, that's, again, some of the ways they use to make their system work. Now, when does it fail? That's simple. That's an overlap. Whenever it pays you a profit. Whenever it pays you a profit, they come to you and they say, hey, sell us some grain, and you say, nah, I don't think so. They sell you a little. We give you $5, no, no, give you a few bushel, but uh, we want some more. How much more do you want? Ha, I don't know, just want some more. <laughs> How many times you guys... Some of, one of your neighbors comes down the road and you got a horse sitting out there and the kid quit riding it, went off to school, and that hay burner is killing you. And you'd like to send it to the fox farm, and you can, incidentally. You can get more for a horse now than you can a cow. So there's no excuse for having those around any longer. <laughs> but your neighbor comes by and he's got a youngster coming up and they want that good old solid horse and say, um, hey, um, how much you want for that horse? What do you say? You say to yourself, damn, I'm not going to put price on that because I might leave a buck on the table. So you say, how much you give me? <laughs> <laughs> and he says, well, I'll give you $75. That ain't enough. That ain't enough. You didn't know what you were going to say that ain't enough to, but as soon as he said 75 bucks, you said you knew what it wasn't enough to. <laughs> this is the way we think. Why do we think that way? Because we've been taught to think that way. Why do we have an education, no program? It's an ongoing program. As we told you, it's going to continue and continue and continue because we're going to counter-educate. We're going to debrief you and start you all over again. That's the only way in the world we can combat it. So here you are, serving a system designed for and by somebody else. When he was talking about systems, he should have said to you, did you ever try to run a train north and south on a track that was built east and west? That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to take the grain trader, grain procurement system, and get a profit out of it. And I think I proved to you that when it pays you a profit, it disappears. It wasn't designed to get you a profit. It was designed to get for the, the trader an abundant supply of grain any place, any time he needs it to fill any emergency that he might have come up. That's what it was designed to do. And here we pray to God eternally. You have more faith than I have that you can make something perform a miracle for you that was designed to do something else that destroys itself the minute it does what you want it to do for you. Ladies, when you get home, untangle some of these sentences for them and tell them what I said, will you? <laughs> That's why I like to see ladies in a group. Bring the women. They take the first cut in the budget. And most of the time, you don't even know about it. And if you'll just come with your husband, no fooling, you can explain to him what we said in that seminar all day, all the way home. And then you can nag the hell out of him all night about why he isn't following it. <laughs> now, you... You people who haven't heard it before, do you feel a little easier about understanding that monster? What it can do and what it can't do? 
you feel a little bit easier about quitting the use of it, that it's maybe an exercise in futility. It's kind of like trying to push a car up a hill with a rope. Now I'm going to get into a more serious, well that's serious, man, that's, that's terminal. Whenever you leave here, a young man said to me back in, in over in Illinois uh, last winter, he came to me and he said, um, he kept arguing with me, well how about this, how about that? Well you see, when you get into this next section, we're going to tell you how to do it. And he had all kinds of ideas and I said, and this is what I'm going to give you. I said, young man, you have a serious disease. It's similar to a cancer, and it's terminal. I have just given you an absolute sure cure for that awful disease. I worked with him about a half hour, and I've only got about that many patients because I haven't got many years to go, so I've used most of my patients, you see. you and run out. And I said, I've given you an absolute guaranteed prescription, a formula, whereby you can cure that. Now, I guess about all I can say to you from this minute on is either take your medicine or perish. So now I'm going to give you your medicine. I'm going to talk to you about the G2000, new National Farmers Organization G2000 grain power system. If you will look into your folders, you'll find in there a contract for sale way in the back. We don't have one. Will you draw me uh, three lines across there, not too far apart, and throw them up? I told you that systems are simple. And in that contract for sale, there is a complete system built to take you from where you are to where you wish to go with the cost of production plus a reasonable profit, but not one damn nickel more. And you'll find it in section one and section two in there. It, it takes up perhaps one third of the entire space. It has about one fiftieth of the words on the face of that thing. And it's a very simple system. Section two, let's go with that one. What does it do? Why is it in there? Why are the, flex why are the flexible things that are in there there? When the R6 was put together, and I want to go back just a minute. You remember, you t anybody here remember when they had the R4? And the R5? Well, don't get that confused with this. <laughs> because there's no, there's no similarity. Because in between those three lines lay doesn't well now you take that back out there and get your money back. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Huh? There is a handbook in there It says, uh, read that to me. How, how to use the G2000R6. You got one in there. It isn't official, but it's, uh, you, we'll use that for the purpose, huh? You mad at me now? Guess he isn't, he didn't say anything. <laughs> now when that was, the, the O4, the R4, it was put together in an ingenious way. You had lost the confidence in the organization, and the organization had lost, well, we looked at each other like two strange dogs. So you said, okay, I'll give you that grain, but in 90 days I want it back, or I won't sign it. So we said, yeah, okay. So we signed up a whole lot of grain, 90 days. The grain trade took a look at our little dealie that we were playing, and they thought, 
Hey, why just buy it from men of old? It's, it's agony green, or they wouldn't have it on that short a period of time. You know, those people aren't stupid. They got some real bright people working for them. They pay them well, too. And they said, if we just hold off a little bit, um, it'll be back in the market for two bits under. So we had a little trouble finding a buyer. So he gave it back to you at the end of 90 days, didn't sell much. And we thought, God, we can't have this because every 90 days we're sending that grain up and we're losing about 50% of it every time. So we're going to pull a real sharp one. We're going to cut it on 30 days. So we come out with an R5. Now we can have it for 30 days. We couldn't find a buyer with a 10-foot pole. They all disappeared. You remember in the spring that all the hell that the National Farmers Organization got because we didn't sell your grain and the market went down? We had a goofed up system, a 30-day system. That's just like Safeway hauling all of the stuff out of their store, back down to the warehouse, and then having a fire sale on it down there at a less than the cost of production, and then bringing what they had left, the shoddy goods, back into the, uh, into the store at, at the end of 30 days, at the, not, at the beginning of the next month. That's the practice we were using. And we had to stop it. So we came out with this R6. And it was based on the concept of what does a system has to do as far as the NFO is concerned. The first thing it has to do is take us from where we are to where we want to go. If it doesn't, it's no good. And that's how it was measured. And then we, thought, we, we said we've got to have a bank. We've got to build confidence in the people that when it goes into Section 2, it don't come out of there until you say come out. Because you had had some very unhappy experiences or where you'd put it in to be sold next week or next month and it was gone the next day. We know this. I was there. So we stopped that. When it, it's like a bank. When you put it in there, it's there. Another factor in the Section 2 is that we put in acres. You see, I just got through telling you that if you have to go to town with all your product every year, you're not going to have much in the bank, are you? In the way of bushels. But you do have acres. And acres have an, a resounding effect, effect uh, on market psych. See, they come out the 1st of February and they say, or 1st of January and say, planted acres times normal use is going to use three, uh, produce two times as much as we need this year, so we're in a comfortable position, down come the prices. So we had to talk about the same thing they were talking about. So we put in acres. Sign up your acres. And then it became obvious that when we have to start leasing cars for five years, they were going to have to extend the years of acres. And there was our power block. There is where the power block for this organization is built. You want to put a little power block down there in the corner and take that one off, draw a slant line, we'll show you a power block. Remember this. When you people decide to work together, use your own system, put about 10, 12 percent of the grain together, your power is enormous. I'm going to show you that in a minute, too. Now, see that power block over there? We start feeding that market. The way we've been doing it is that every time it starts up, we quit selling. We'll sell about 3% up on top, but it's never the same 3%. It's because of some cash flow need. It dumps over the top. He's not going to draw that. It dumps over the top, and you all know that most of you sell right down there in the bottom of that thing before it starts up again. But you won't sell on an up market. And you won't build that block. You'll feed it in there one truck load at a time. But now let's start building a market. Let's say that a, a trader makes a sale short. He sells something he hasn't got along about this time of the year. 
we take a little piece of that block and we put her in there and now he's got say some four dollar product we charged him four dollars for it he sells that short for four and a half we make another sale over in the other side of that block if we don't start putting twice as much back into that block as we take out of it we're going to do what they call deplete capital that block is your capital your power and every time you take 10 pounds out of it you put 20 in it you do it because you see you have that even if you got it in reserve you have that in the reserve program with your loan it's you can still put it to the nfo even if you feed it you can still put it in there in that block and they can't psych the market with your green because you've got the facts too now let's make another sale they made the sale we fill it she's up another 10 cents 15 cents 20 cents we're making a difference it's going up what if we run out of grain over here? Everybody quits, don't they? The unorganized, the unschooled, the undisciplined quit. They go back to their old practices. Down comes your market. They got to milk it. So you keep building that market. Now you get it up to cost of production. Put the C of P plus. What? Yeah, profit. Reasonable, RP. That's the point right there. Now draw a horizontal line. Now I'll put a dotted line a half inch above that and mark that margin for the dealer. Now we got that price up to six bucks. And that reflects, we'll say, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's manure or maybe it's, what do we call it? Corn, uh, corn biddle. You know, they call it corn biddle. Uh, everybody can grow it. Seeds for nothing. And it uh, doesn't have to be planted. Just leave it in the bin and it'll sprout and create a new crop. And you don't have to have any land, just a bin. And you get six bucks for it. That's the cost of product. Ridiculous. Now we start making sales out there. And we don't worry about his profit because he'll take care of that. And we keep on going on that. The only variation we got in that now, if we got a brain in our head, is our cost of production. Up or down? Now we stabilize the industry. The grain trader knows what he's going to pay for grain on a formula basis for the next year, doesn't he? And he knows we're contractable on that price. Have we given the most essential form of energy in the world a little dignity, like a fair price? Instead of having a gang that would come into the Board of Trade every day to make it their living, they set the price. When are we going to send them to the racetrack? They'll have a lot more fun out there making money than they do down in that pit. It'll be healthy for them, too. They'll be out in the sun, <laughs> fresh air. They can go back to the clubhouse and drink a little booze. They have a lot of fun. They can see, even see the race run. They won't have to look at a ticker. That's stabilizing the industry. That's how we can do it. But remember, you can't, you can't go one inch without that block and a continuation of the building of that block in size. Now, run that slant line on up. I'm going to show you what you look like when you don't live up to, to that commandment three. We're up above a reasonable price. We're gouging now. When we get up about the top of that thing, they say that with you, I'm going to go someplace else and get this stuff, or I'm going to go out of business, or I'm going to milk you. 
Don't you guys ever get tired of being rimp milked? I did. I joined the NFO and put all my production in. At least if I'm going to get milked, I want to be milked by a friend. <laughs> Might come my turn sometime. If they don't make her that way, they run her down, run her up again, and strip you. When was the last time you got stripped? Now, milking isn't too bad, but that strip and that hurts. <laughs> Does it make sense to you? This is what we got to do. It isn't difficult. I think that the American producer of agricultural commodities, I always forget uh, ranchers get mad if you call them farmers, and farmers get mad if you call them ranchers, and, and stupid people get mad if you call them smart, and smart people get mad if you call them stupid. I just say producers of agricultural commodities. That's good enough, isn't it? I think that our greatest problem is that we have been brainwashed for generations to run up blind alleys. Nobody has ever come along, really, until NFO settled down on this thing and really went to work on it and built a system. Now, we've got in that section two, we have your the power base. You can offset market psych with your acres. If it takes 10 years to amortize out a car, we can put a 10-year block together to guarantee that that car's lease is going to be paid and used. We can do all of the things that we need to do. If you stop to think about it, there's where you can really build a power base. See, every facility we've lost is because we had the grain signed up for six months and along came the opposition and enhanced price in there for a few days. And all of a sudden, there's three good old stalwarts standing there going, <laughs> everybody went after the dime. The way you get stability is by making commitments, because once it's committed, they're not going to throw the dime at you, because they know you're going to throw it back at them. They'll look ridiculous. And they're only going to hang it out there for a little bit anyway. So that's why you've got to make those extended commitments. You know, you, you think maybe, well, I'll, I'll live 80 years. I'll farm 40 of it. I'll go to school anywhere from 12 to 20 years. But when I build a marketing program, I only want to make a commitment for 15 minutes. It's got to be something of substance. You know that, and I know that. But you say, they've taught you, they've taught you this. If you'll just come down and bring that 300 bushel you can haul on that poor old broken down 1968 model Dodge that leaks, why, we'll give you a check right there for it. Who wants out? They got you serving the old system, and they got a million ways to con you into it. If you build your power base and work with your neighbors, all things will come to pass. One of the, one of the big problems that we have in a county meeting is it pays too slow, we don't like the weights and grades, and I smoked a pipe once. And we don't like the, uh, the idea of not getting a sample back. We don't like a, a whole bunch of things. You see, if you were using your system, the way you measure it is you say, if I was using my system, if I was building that power block we just put over there, if I was doing the things that I ought to do and, and convincing my neighbor that they ought to go with me and go out and teach this program and hold seminars throughout the nation every year, progressively and intelligently, would this be a problem? What's the answer, folks? 
You named it right there. I had a man sit here right over here this morning and tell me that he sold all of his product for 35 cents a bushel more than the NFO could get for him. Well, in the first place, I know he lied to me. In the second place, he made me so mad I forgot to ask him, well, God, if you're getting that much, why didn't you call the, the, the bargainer? We'd all sold to him. But I lost my patience. I told you I only had about that much left. <laughs> this is what you have to use. In section one, in section one, you have to learn to use any system, and that's the area that you'll learn to use it. That's when your day-to-day -day cash flow needs are taken care of, section one. Immediate sale. If you've got to have cash, we put her out there for you. It'll be back in six or eight months, you get your money. Just be patient. No, we're a lot better on that than we used to be. But if we could have, write the contract for the price, if you give us the power to do that, we will correct all other contractual arrangements that are not equitable. And only then we w will we recover our dignity and be able to write that contract that's equitable and honest and keep us out of the area that is foreign and hostile to us, such as transportation, guaranteeing transportation to, to meet a deadline off 2,000 miles from us or something like that. Guaranteeing this, guaranteeing that. Whenever you make your system work, we can circumvent those things. We can say, no, we are not going to comply with the Minneapolis uh, Board of Trade rules. But now we have to. You see, we don't have the muscle to circumvent it. So this is, I'm, I'm running through this. I'm running a little late. No, I'm not. I still got some time. <laughs> He thinks he's talking about my life. Yeah, I don't have much of that. I, I, wish, I wish you would hold it, and as you go out and sign up, those people out there are very qualified. They're all staff who've been through this training session, and they can answer all of your questions. This is a capsule situation. And I'm not avoiding them. I love questions. Because after we get through running a seminar like this, I get the most intelligent questions I've ever received from a group of farmers. <laughs> Truth. Not funny. Truth. Honest. So if you'll do that, God bless you. Or come up here after it's over with. I'll have a few minutes and we'll talk. Where was I? Section one, selling grain. That's where you practice. You practice two things. You practice learning how to do the logistics of it, which are simple, but you've got to do them right. And in that folder you have, you have all the documents except two. You don't have the confirmation of the receipt of the contract for sale in the office. There's not, no, not a copy of that in there, and there's not a copy of the settlement sheet in there. And these things will be taken care of on the computer in a very short time. And you learn to work together as a group, to bargain as a group. You can build blocks, put them out there for sale. If they don't go, pull them back, shine them up, reduce the size, increase the price, drop the price, increase the size, do whatever you want to do, monkey business with them, yo-yo them. It learns you to work together and have a ball. It learns you that what you can do you teach yourself what you can do working together and manipulating a market with a sizable block of production. You see, we've got eight regions now, and we can talk to eight regional managers and put in a national block all over the world, all over the United States, on a particular commodity like barley or, or corn, every place that's grown, and we can export it out through five or six export ports at one time. That's how big we are. Give me that doggone thing over, that printout over there. Uh, uh, print out here that's those are every one of those are contracts for sale that you people have committed into this organization you're not running with a flyby outfit you got some strength here you want to have it about five times that big this is the actual print out of the inventory you should see what some of the counties are doing in a way of acres county in south dakota got 
over 100,000 acres in one county blocked for five years. We're on the move. We come up with a 50% increase a year ago. Montana was moving 46% of the grain that the NFO was moving, and they've increased their production this year by 50%, and they're only shipping 18% of our total. You see what the rest of the organization is doing? We're growing. We're making total commitments on a five-year basis. We're on our way. That's what you can do if you use your system. You get confidence. You love it. It's your system. It isn't some hashed over thing that some con is trying to sell you in a way of making a living. You know, now all you have to do is buy the Wall Street Journal and you'll make money. That's what they're telling you. So I guess in closing, what I have to say to you is look left and right and smile. Go ahead, do that. Look left and right and smile. If you've got a friend this side of the devil, you just looked at both of them. Thank you. Wait a minute, wait a minute, we're not through yet. Sit down, please. I have a few things I have to go through. After the last meeting we had in here, which wasn't as big, everybody was still coming for breakfast, we signed up 35,715 acres. <laughs> Out in the back, as you leave, and this is an educational program, and in order to learn more what we're up against and what we have to do, we have two books that you need to buy. And they're being sold out in the back. The one is The Merchants of Grain. You'll understand that they're powerful, that they're businesslike, and we do lots of business with them. And most of the contracts that we can, we can accomplish over the telephone, and they honor them. I don't have any compunction about working with the grain companies. We just have to have a big enough block. The other one is a book on the Seven Sisters. And there's an entire parallel there of what we're trying to do and what the OPEC nations accomplished. It took them 15 years to put their organization together because they were fighting each other too. And the first crack that they recognized they had some muscle was, the, was Qaddafi of Libya, who bargained out a bigger price than anybody else had. Prior to that, they were selling oil at 15 cents a barrel, and any negotiations they had with the oil companies, it was a penny or two at a time, and it took months. But once they got together, and you all remember it very well, in 1973, they put on an embargo. They didn't shut it all down, but they made it awfully uncomfortable. And we had long gas lines. And the oil companies had to divert their supplies all over the world. In three weeks' time, they raised the price from $1.12 to $11.60. Today, they don't even negotiate with the oil companies, do they? They just sit down and announce the price. And it's right at the wellhead. They didn't have to get into the distribution. They didn't buy the oil stations. They didn't buy the ships. They just priced their oil because they had the volume. Exactly what we have to do. You need to read both of these books. If you don't think they're powerful, there's one part in here that tells where Mobutu and Zaire was going to nationalize the, the businesses in Zaire. If one of the grain companies had a flour mill and, and Mabudu was buying flour from a French co-op. The grain company met with him, and when they left the meeting, they had an absolute exclusive. There was no way that they could nationalize the grain or the flour mill because they wouldn't have gotten the wheat. And Kissinger, tells, was trying to negotiate with the Russians. When they needed our wheat so bad, he was going to try and lower the price of the oil that he would pay for the Rus to the Russians. Well, they didn't want to get in trouble with the OPEC nation, so they said, shove it. But while this was going on, while our government was negotiating with our wheat, they were getting wheat from the grain companies from Australia and Canada. And they don't know today what the Russian wheat sale, how much it was for. They have the ships. They have the barges. They have more rail cars than the railroads. They have the distribution all over the world, and they're powerful. And you're not going to blow them out of the water. But you can price their product. 
or our product to them. You need to know what's in these books. They're very valuable. Incidentally, we just got a nice report from Don Mum in the Des Moines Register. I'd like to have you read it. And it involves our grain program. Later this afternoon, at f uh, between 5 and 6.30, in the auditorium where you were last night, there's going to be a film shown, and it's, on the, it's called the Northern Lights. It was filmed up in North Dakota, and it covers the organization of, or the organizing of the Nonpartisan League back in 1915-16 in North Dakota. One, it points out six different things that I'd just like to read to you, and it's the parallel of the futility of always trying to do something and how old the problem is. Number one, it discusses the age-old problem. Number two, the film records the fact that there is no solution to farm prices outside of farmers and ranchers themselves. And number three, the hardships and privations that are necessary to organizing are the same today as in the film. Number four, though our lives do not seem as bleak today as in the film, the scale of inequity with other segments of the economy is still the same. Number f the fifth point is the film points out that these inequities must be overcome if people are going to have meaningful lives. And the sixth point is that legislation has not been a permanent solution to the farmer's problem. And between two legislative sessions in North Dakota during that 1915 to 16, they went out and organized the farmers in the nonpartisan league and they took over the politics in North Dakota. They had a state bank and they got state elevator, but it never solved their problem. It wasn't big enough, it was done through legislation, and it's never accomplished what they had hoped. This is the first time farmers have ever had a chance. We have an absolute exclusive on the solution. So I don't have any problem insisting that you sign your grain up for five years. We just signed another fellow out here for another five, for ten. I think he's the first guy we have in a 10-year program. We're going to solve this from now on. So we might as well get with it. And you cannot do it one load at a time, and you cannot do it one year at a time. And we cannot do it just for one generation. Our children and our children's children are too important. And we cannot be that selfish. I'm proud to be a part of this organization, and I think you understand now why I like him. <laughs> We're going to be meeting back here at 1 o'clock for another meeting. Though there will be some of you I know that will want to go to other meetings, but if you don't have to, as you go out through that door, we have a lot of people out there to grab you and get you committed, 100%. We've got these green buttons, and we want all of you to wear them. We have the best system. We have the only system. The old one won't work. So let's do it. Thank you. <laughs>